I'm not doing that again. <laughs> You're not kidding me. Some, some ants in the back. Yeah, <laughs> they were. Well, not just with bars. <laughs> Today is a special episode, uh, not only for myself, but for Colin. Uh, Colin hit me up, so we have Amber. It's, it is an Amber episode, but Colin hit me up to, um, well, I got a phone call a while back and it was about, hey, what are you gonna do with the Explorer? Uh, is there a way that I could finish her and do the right stuff to her and, and still kind of retain the original design direction, but I want an off-road vehicle. Um, and, you know, I think Colin clearly knew that I just didn't have the time and the resources to be putting into Amber and it really wasn't the right fit for me. I, I think I got her more out of the legacy and inspiration I got from her back when I was younger, um, 20 years old, 21 years old and all the way up till now and Explorers and SUVs have a special spot in my heart. Um, so we've made this, this agreement for him to, um, bring her back to life and revive her and take it on as his personal project uh, and it's been just that now dating back to when i worked on beth my beam super crew that was my whole like that was a special time in my life that was part of you know i didn't have any kids yet uh, my mom got diagnosed with cancer the same time that i started working on the super crew and it was something i, I got through my work week and it, i wasn't doing awesome shit like this for my job but I got through my work week and every day I had her outside and I would like sit and look at her and I'd, and then I would like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, cause I work four tens, I would bring her in and I'd just bang on this thing. And it was like, it got me through hard times because I was just so motivated to like finish a project. And it just like someone being able to build a project from the ground up, buying a vehicle and just using it, you get your shits and giggles from that. But really there's, there's some people that building something is something special and it's a, and it's a drive and it's a sense of accomplishment that I think every person that likes to build stuff with their hands or likes to craft stuff should go through because you get so much from it. Um, you know, a guy came through when, when the project was started, when, when Colin was just started on it and he said something about that air is going to bother the fuck out of me. Is that Jeremiah back there? Of course it is. A guy came through, I want to say three months ago and Colin was just starting on the thing and he's like, Hey man, blah, blah. And I, I said, that's Colin's. Uh, he's going to, he's going to bring her back and work on her every week. And he's like, Hey, these projects, you know, you don't, he's not going to finish it. And you know, he's already going to work on it. He's just going to get over it. And he's going to, and it was like, the hope was just like <laughs> sucked out. I'm like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? Like, that's not true. And I didn't say anything about myself because I did that shit. I did. I did that project. I finished it. I worked on it every weekend until it was done. I worked on it every bit of time I could. And I, I, I obsessed on it and I took it in and it was something I grew with. I grew with the project. And so this has turned into something with Colin where he's, he has that same energy and he's building this thing and he's taking, he's doing it right. And it's, it's one of the most like satisfying and gratifying things for myself to like come and see him on the weekend. And he's just banging on the thing and accomplishing things. Um, and it's really a time it's something it, like, it couldn't be any better of a story. You know, I think that Beth, my big full size is my truck and that's what I should finish and build how I want to. And it's, it's built for more of my pace of driving. And I think that this thing being light, and it just, it's perfect for Colin and it's, it's gonna be an awesome thing and watching him go through it has been beautiful. Um, and like surrendering some of my, my asshole stubbornness to him being able to design things a certain way and not being so attached to my way or the highway, you know, it's like his build. And as long as there's the right direction, no matter what being taken, then it, it works. So today is the update. We're gonna check in. We're going to check in with Colin. We're going to look at the progress. We're going to talk about what's been done, what's currently being done and the end result. And, um, let's just hit it now. Look what we brought in. Now, remember, hi YouTube. <laughs> we, 
<laughs> we tried to do this before with Eric's That's truck, and time. yeah, and it was just it was awkward, you know. And it it takes some time of talking to the camera, even for myself. I like, it, you know, I get I complacent when like it's just it, you, when you start thinking about it. Yeah, you start staring at the camera. Then you're like, oh man. So it just. I think, and that's the part of like our channel, we showcase builds. This is not a show to show drama in the shop. I'm not making dick jokes. I am like here to showcase our work and the builds and the passion that go into each one. And that's why each episode deserves a vehicle, yeah. not an overall. It deserves each concentrated, saturated build design. That, that's like, that's what we're aiming for. And that's our story. We're just telling the full story. And this is part of our story. Um, I don't even know where you want to lead off, and I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i let you take the reins all the way if you want to take the reins. A lot of times we get vehicles in here that are running and driving vehicles, and we just slowly start like taking steps back you know, to get it to the, the final product. And we end up going so far to where it's almost a complete build, and we always joke about it like, dude, a kid could have taken this you know, vehicle that might be down here you know, and use it, and we could have started over to build something up here. And we always joke about that. So original intentions with this thing was going to be an engine, a trans, wiring and plumbing. <laughs> um, and I just kept finding things that I didn't like, you know, and I, you know, I'm doing, doing this. When else am I going to be able to build a vehicle to my liking uh, other than now, you know, in the rest of my life. So I just took a couple steps back and gutted it. And now I'm just building my dream vehicle. So here it is. As I got into this thing and started realizing the layers that this thing has and some of the cage not being fully welded and just the heavy metal, the huge frame, the gnarly C notch in the rear, I just started taking some steps back and just kind of decided to do a full tube chassis. So I still want it beamed. I want it lightweight because I love going to Glamis and I'm on a budget so I don't have the money for a huge horsepower engine. Um, Again, I just got a 5.3 Chevy out of a Silverado, just a TH400 Trans. I just want this thing lightweight, fun, and enjoyable, reliable vehicle. Part of like this, what's important, it, you go back and watch the first Amber episode, and you could probably watch the second one because there's information in there too that's going to be helpful. But if you really stick to that as like your cliff notes for this thing, the, it, it's going to kind of trickle through what we're still doing right now. And part of like what I was stressing, because Colin's like, dude, I need to build. He's like, the pivots are weird. Like the bottom line is when I got the car, I started looking under there and I was like, oh, it, it was dressed, spooky, spooky okay. stuff. Like just plates and partial welds and stuff and gnarly. Um, and you know, the upper cage was okay, but like a lot of the pivots and the stuff lower was different. Um, so Colin, you know, he's got pivot boxes in here that he can show you and that stuff. But really what I, I kept bugging him, like, does this have the same up travel? Because like this truck had massive up travel. It probably had 16 inches or something from ride height, like something crazy. And when it would tuck, like they, you know, the, they used the beaver and the beaver went and cut all the fender out here. But that, like it tucks up to there and it's, it's super impressive. So that was like one of the things I just, I was like, make sure it has the up travel. So it can sit super low and it can just rip. So if you take them through your pivot boxes and all your layout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, again with this thing, its presence is incredible. I just, the look of it, the, the feel, everything's cool. So I'm gonna try to keep it exactly how it was, just a, a new, new heart uh, on the inside. But like, again, we're keeping the stock bumpers, you know, the whole thing is gonna look completely as it did, just new new internals yeah new and nice and functional yeah. and safe you know dialed the, the other thing too is like inch and a half cage so everything in here is all inch and a half like a like a little race car you know and it's it's cool looking like when you start looking at the symmetry and the layout this was all calling stuff in here um and i just saw right now like even the sway bar fits perfect here mm -hmm. you know like having that integrated into there he's kept the stock bumpers because the, the, it is it's a presence thing with this this explorer like this exact explorer People still message me to this day, like when they see them, they're like, that Explorer changed my life. That Explorer was the reason I built my Explorer. That Explorer was the reason I got into pre-runners. Like it, 
it did something just the way it, it like the colors and the stance and the way it like held itself the changed like a bunch of people including myself and that's why i was like if i can and, and joey joey's raising his hand so like everybody knows about it and i know like garrett you might be watching this too and i know garrett was attached to this thing and i i know it's been it was hard for him to even like pass it on and it, i don't get a lot of feedback from him and i know it's because it's like a soft spot where he's like oh it's my baby and i i want to honor that because part of the sale originally was like don't like don't not use it and don't do dumb shit to it to make it ugly mm -hmm. and like blow out its vibe so there's nothing that we're gonna do here that's gonna do that like it's all gonna it's just gonna do everything that it did better yeah and be stronger that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Uh, starting in the rear, keeping the original bumper, haven't completed the mount yet, still a work in progress, um, and incorporating a sway bar that Eric from SoCal Suspension uh, so generously gave me from the Tundra. So kind of incorporated that into the back half uh, due to the size limitations of it uh, with some 74 weld arms, uh, extending them to work in this situation around the fuel cell. Uh, Amber originally came with the jazz fuel cell that hung pretty low. I think it was like a 32 gallon tank. Um, I wanted to raise it up uh, just because of the, the packaging back here. I decided to just build the tank. Um, and some of the learning process on Eric's truck, uh, we built it at an eighth and it ended up warping. So due to that, I went with 3 sixteenths with a removable top so I could fully weld it, you know, inside and out. The top isn't something that necessarily needs to be a service item, so I'm just using Hilux fasteners, which are a one-time use fastener, and a seam sealer, like four gas tanks. It's baffled, two intake pumps. It's gonna have a filler with a removable top built into the chassis, so it's removable. Uh, tapped bungs that are accessed from the outside. So for the, the cap, on the fuel cell, I wanted to run high lock fasteners and a fuel tank sealant. High lock fasteners are just a small little titanium fastener for one time use. You tighten it down just like a normal bolt and the actual hex will break off and it'll just be like a little stud on there. So this portion is just pressed up into the tank and there's actually a little, little Allen on there. So you hold the Allen and then tighten the nut on. Cage work. Uh, started from the B pillar back. Uh, C pillar tied into the shock mounts. Shock mounts pushed over as far as possible to get four full size seats back here. Tied into the fuel cell cradle. 5.3 Chevy. Uh, my neighbor had a 01 Silverado that got rear-ended. So I bought the entire truck um, from his insurance for 1500 bucks. Scrapped it out, got 1500 bucks for the, you know, cab and the miscellaneous parts and whatnot. Kept this engine originally for my F100 that I had, you know, a couple years ago. Sold the truck, client wanted a 6.0. So I bought the engine back. Um, came with the harness and all the Holly EFI stuff. So this is what I'm using. 400 that originally came in the vehicle. Uh, it's just gonna need a full rebuild because it's hollow right now, lightweight. That's about all the progress I've had so far. Again, this thing was just in a weird stage to where it was more, um, you know, just taking it back to the basics, just getting rid of the things I didn't like and starting to add some tubing, get something for me to work off of. Uh, my goals with this thing is again, a tube chassis. I don't want any frame rail on this thing. I want it to be lightweight. I want to run an equal length beam, keep everything lightweight just and build a bulkhead out of tubing and small plate to mount the beams and incorporate the pivots to the front bulkhead. 
All right, next update. Uh, finish the sway bar arms, mount the bumper, fully weld the cage in the rear, finish the tank, uh, cab tie-ins, some one inch tubing, something simple. Uh, ca cab does need to be removable to fully weld the cage, mount the seats, and have a game plan for the front end. Haven't really decided what beams or how I'm gonna do that. I am planning on just running a bulkhead for my beams to keep it tube chassis and incorporate the bulkhead to the tube work that I have now. All right, conclusion. Conclusion, you guys. So this is Colin and this is Colin's Amber. It's Colin is a family member at this point. Um, I would almost consider Colin a partner with this whole program. Uh, I, I go to Colin for insight. I don't give a fuck how old he is. He is a responsible, amazing human, and um, to keep this in the family is is huge, and that's what we're doing. So we're gonna like, this will be Colin's build series. Uh, I can come in when it makes sense, but I'd love to transition into giving this to him, and it's part of the channel too, just to branch out, you know, and, and follow this thing all the way from like where it's at now to testing and assembly and wiring and just follow the journey. Um, so now what you do have to do is you do have to do the like, comment, subscribe <laughs> because that's just the digger. You gotta yeah. pay the toll. So anyways, there's Colin. Again, thank you YouTube. Uh, if you guys wanna see where this thing goes, just like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. And, and if you have any comments as to the stuff you wanna see, um, on here specifically or want more from Colin comment cool thanks <laughs>